Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Lorenzo Grande. I'm a technology analyst at ID TechX, and I'm here with the CEO of uh, CapexX, Anthony Congetz, uh, who has uh, some great news to share with us. Hi, Lorenzo. Thank you very much. Yes, we've announced today a new 3-volt thin prismatic supercapacitor. And uh, this is great news for anyone, for instance, doing wearable devices, IoT devices, key fobs, etc., because it allows them to put this uh, three volt supercapacitor directly across a three volt primary coin cell battery, like the CR um, series of batteries that are very commonplace, sold in their billions every year. And now they don't need a uh, low dropout uh, voltage regulator or an LDO or a buck converter. That saves them money, gets them more energy. The supercapacitor energy is up by typically 40% or more. Power is now up by 23% in the supercapacitor, and we would think that the battery users will get now 30, 40, 50% more battery runtime using this new supercapacitor with a coin cell battery. Oh, that's uh, really great to hear. Um, I have a, a question regarding the thickness of your supercapacitors. Uh, how thin can you make them? We can make them at the moment down to 0.6 of a millimeter. Um, our licensee, Marata, is already down to 0.4 of a millimetre, and uh, we, we don't see why with, um, in time, we won't get down to even 0.2 of a millimetre for a single cell. And one of the advantages of uh, supercapacitors is also their wide uh, temperature range, so the temperature range among in which they can operate. Uh, so I, heard, I know you have uh, also some excellent results in this respect, is that correct? Yes, uh, in fact, tomorrow in my presentation, I'm gonna show you test results where we're running the supercapacitor cells at three volts continuous and at 70 degrees Celsius. And you'll see very little degradation over a long period of time in either the ESR, the, the resistance of the cell, or the capacitance of the cell. So this is, uh, when we compare this to the current technology today at 2.7 volts, this is head and shoulders better than anything out there at the moment. Have, uh, I know you have uh, already some licensees uh, who, have, uh, uh, who will be using your products. Can you tell me something more about it? Yes. Well, we've already licensed the technology to both Murata in Japan and AVX in America. And they're two very, very big electronic component device manufacturers. Um, so they're using our IP. They're uh, using it in different markets to where we're going. We're fully expecting to add uh, new licensees as well. So there's a number that uh, we expect to come through in, uh, in the short while, and uh, that will give us more and more reach and help overcome the, uh, the illiteracy, if there is any, in supercapacitors, and for, so engineers have a better idea of why they should use a supercapacitor and not get stuck in the past of just only ever think about using a battery. And obviously, um, from what you're telling me, uh, you also have a global out, uh, outreach uh, in terms of your partners, you're just not you're not only limited to Europe, but you're also looking at elsewhere, North America, Japan, well, uh, East Asia. That's absolutely right. In fact, we're an Australian company, and that's where we do our R and D, and where most of us are based. However, most of our sales are, um, are going to North America, into Europe or Asia. We sell very little in the in the Australian market itself. Um, one of the things we see with this three volt um, advancement that I told you about is that. Over time, we expect this to roll out into other small supercapacitors, like our thin line supercapacitors, which are currently at 0.6 of a millimetre thick, and also into our large automotive uh, energy harvesting off grid uh, energy storage cells, which are up to six, seven thousand farads each. And so we would hope to see that three volt technology progress right through there over time. I mean, that's one of the key benefits that CapEx has is that. We're very adaptable in terms of our manufacturing process. We can make a variety of sizes. We're not limited to uh, can shapes or form factors like a lot of the competition. Um, and we can adapt that with our very, very high power. This is one of the critical things that sets us apart from the competition. We have the highest power density in the world, coupled with thin form factor, making these the, our device is very easy to be integrated by our customers for both small supercapacitors and very large supercapacitors.
Uh, speaking of performance, are there any metrics you would like to share with us? For instance, a specific capacitance or cycle life that your products can handle? Oh, the cycle life is enormous. So it's certainly in millions. It, it does depend a little bit on the, the ambient conditions, what the temperature is, what the voltage is, etc. But these are very long life devices and very safe compared to battery technology. So, so from that point of view. In terms of power, our small supercapacitors now are over, some of these are over 100 um, kilowatts per, per litre in power density. So that's an enormous amount of power. And um, also, if I think of the IoT industry, there's a, a strong driver towards a fit and forget uh, technologies so your supercapacitors can handle millions of cycles so once they are in one IoT device you can rest assured that nothing uh, you won't need to replace it uh, or, or recharge it. Well that's right uh, on the other hand we also now offer um, designers of these these IoT devices the opportunity to greatly extend the, the, the runtime they'll get from a primary battery cell like a 3 volt battery cell by using our cell the supercapacitor is just great at taking all the peak powers needed for things like um, digital analog actuators, uh, radio transmitters, uh, anything that has a burst of power. We just uh, we can handle that far, far better than any battery can, and that greatly extending the battery life at the same time. But I think one of the things that that's important with this is the ability to take the costs out of the solution for the customer. The LDO currently is costing, or this is a low dropout voltage regulator that today would be needed to take the battery voltage from 3 volts down to 2.7 volts. This is typically costing 30, 31 US cents per device. So we can save that immediately. And in, as you know, in IoT devices, 31 cents is a lot of money in the bill of materials. Yeah. The other, on the other hand, by taking that out, we, we save the battery a lot of energy that's otherwise wasted in going from 3 volts to 2.7 volts using this low dropout voltage regulator. And that's how we can get 30, 40, 50 percent increase in battery runtime. It's a real win-win for the industry. Um, so uh, I, um, I'm very grateful that you took the Aditech X, the opportunity to come here to the Aditech X show to uh, launch this uh, press release. So this is a world uh, uh, um, first in uh, sharing these great news. Uh, is there anything else you would like to tell us about future steps at this point? Well, we are going to roll the technology first into single cells for the three volt coin cell uh, battery market. And then we expect to take it into the um, uh, other small supercapacitor cells we have that are prismatic. So this is our, our Z, our A, our W and uh, S footprints. And also into our thin line products and into our large prismatic form factor cells from 500 farads, 1,000 1, farads, up to 6,000 farads. Okay, well, this is uh, all great to hear, and uh, I'm sure here at the Aditech X show, show uh, there will be many end users that would like to uh, get in conversations with you uh, to discuss how they can implement uh, your product into their wearable devices. Lorenzo, thank you for that. I think that this product will make a huge difference to anyone who's designing IoT devices or wearable devices and they need lower cost, longer run time, all at once. We can do that for them. Tell them to come and see us. Yeah, well, thank I you wish very you all much. the best and thank you for your time. Thank you, Linda.